I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters, and we're talking to the Shidler College of Business today. Um, we're talking to a uh, professor, uh, Constancio Baranal, uh, and he's a, a professor in the business school, but he's doing something that's a little unusual. He's He's got a class um, which he teaches marketing to, and he teaches marketing in creative ways to develop and address programs that will deal um, with climate change. This is very important in our world. It's very important in business. It's very important in Hawaii. It's very important for the Shidler College of Business. And I think it's very important for Constanzio too. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Constanzio. Well, thank you so much for inviting us and for giving us the opportunity to speak with you and to your viewers, Jay. Why don't you introduce there. your two students who are, who are here with us today? Yes, uh, we're joined by two of my students, Reina Kasamina and Marissa Pangan. Hosakawa. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here today, Jay. Okay, welcome, ladies. Uh, so we're going to talk to Constancio first. Any objection? Good. <laughs> I didn't think there would be. <laughs> you, want, you want to stay in good relations with the professor, you know? Uh, okay, Constancio, can you tell us, you know, what the scope of your course is mm -hmm. and what the scope of this special program, um, you know, to get teams involved in finding creative solutions and ways mm -hmm. to deal with climate change. Right. So the, the course itself is, uh, the name of the course is Imagination and Entrepreneurship. And really the focus of the course is to enable and engage our students to think creatively, uh, to use their creative thinking skills to address um, problems and solve problems. And, and you know, when you, when you think about entrepreneurship, it's really about defining the pain points that our customers and our clients are experiencing, right? And we, we see that a lot in, in marketing. And so we're using this course in order to help facilitate and engage our students in their creative thinking process and their analytical thinking process, and also understanding that, you know, a lot of the problems that we're dealing nowadays are very complex. And what I like about this class is that it's a very interdisciplinary course. So you don't need to major in marketing in order to take this course. You could be an engineer, you could be a lawyer or in law school and still be able to take this course. Another thing that is interesting about this class is that it is um, different levels you know, in terms of who can take the course. So you could be an undergraduate student, a graduate student, an executive education student, uh, and, and you can be a part of this course, right? So in, in some ways, the class itself is a representation of what an actual organization looks like in the real world, right? You have executives, uh, middle managers, and entry-level students uh, or professionals working together. So that's mm. what's interesting about this course. So why do, I, why do I want to take this class? Is it easy? Is it hard? Um, do I have to write a paper, take a final? Do I have to make an oral presentation? What's it like? Well, the class itself is very holistic in terms of the approach, right? So we do a lot of case studies where we look at different companies and how they use creative thinking in addressing the problems they're experiencing. So it, it takes that approach, uh, that, that case study approach. We also do a lot of activities and workshops that would enhance the students' creative thinking. Uh, so every it's, a, it's from six o'clock to 9.45, uh, and uh, we meet twice a week. And you know, you can imagine that in that three and a half hours or so, what we're really doing is engaging with each other, learning from each other, and using our creative thinking um, to um, address different problems that we're experiencing in the world. You know, as, you know I was thinking about this, um, you know, this whole approach, Constancio. And it struck me that uh, the United States of America, the home of uh, modern capitalism, although some people wonder about that these days, um, you know, it's all about the bottom line. And mm -hmm. a business school has to be concerned about the bottom line, because mm -hmm. if you get out there into the business community and you forget about the bot bottom line, the company will forget about you. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, the problem is, how do you deal with climate change and the bottom line and integrate those two approaches uh, without losing your job. <laughs> well, I think we're seeing a different sort of environment now in terms of how corporations are evolving. 
uh, and the way our consumers are also evolving. Our consumers are a little bit different in terms of how they evaluate companies. They're more discerning in terms of the companies that they would like to support. And frankly, it has to do with whether they are adhering to sustainable practices. And we're seeing that a lot, right? A lot of uh, consumers are supporting companies based on their value systems, whether they care about the environment, depends on um, the processes and the manufacturing uh, protocols that they have, right? And, and co corporations have to adopt to that style. And that's one of the things that we would like to infuse to our students here at the Shider College of Business. You know, we're particularly in marketing, sustainability has been a big kind of core discipline that we're trying to integrate into all of our core courses, because we believe that it is important, right? And um, like what you had mentioned, and I think a lot of people would agree, climate change, is one of the most consequential and an existential problem that we're facing and that we are already facing and will continue to face. And, and so it's important to continuously think about that and include that in our, our way of thinking and our approaches. I think that's so I think that's so important, not only here in Hawaii, but everywhere. Um, we mm -hmm. have to tap into this generation and get them to start thinking differently. Mm -hmm. uh, they are our future, our global future, you know, so it's really yeah. important. And if the boss comes to them and says, you know, you're not making enough money, they mm -hmm. have to have the strength um, to speak, you know, to speak power right. to the power. Right, and they right, have right. to tell the boss that, 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 that there's some things that are more important, like mm -hmm. saving the world. You know? yeah. So in and this, go ahead. I'm sorry, and there and there is this new concept too of the triple bottom line, right? Where you're not only looking at profit, but you're also looking at how your company is impacting the planet, right? And also the people. Uh, and so you're looking at those three things all together. So a very holistic view. And also uh, a new type of companies are emerging now where in this concept of doing well by doing good, right? That you as a company continue to do well, right? By doing good things for the environment, good things for the community and for society. I want that. We all want that. We want <laughs> to be able to yeah. speak truth to power. Okay, so this class has various teams and projects. Uh, and these two ladies are from one team and one project, am I right? Uh, they are two different teams. Yeah, two, two different teams, two different projects, yes. Okay, well, let me, let me go to them for a minute. Um, I'm, I'm going to Raina first. Raina, what team, what project are you on? And how did you get on that team and project? Uh, did your professor select it for you or did you select it your own self? Um, I'm from team three. We are called team LSM, LSR double M, which stands for um, all my teams, Stephanie, Lester, Raina, Maki, and Mariah. Um, for our teams, I think Professor Parano chose. Is that the, like the redheaded club or something? You have to have an M in your name to be on the on the team. Right? <laughs> Never mind. Go ahead. Um, but at the beginning of the class, we took a creativity quiz, I believe it was. And then um with the results, we put it into a spreadsheet. And from there, Professor Parano chose our groups. Okay. Uh, why? Why did you enter this class? Um, and why did you enter this team? Um, I entered this class because it was part of my program for um, my master's program. So I'm part of the um, Shadow College of Business Masters of Science and Marketing Management. And this was one of our courses that we have to take. Um, and then this team, it was pretty fun. Um, all of us are from different backgrounds. We have some, two of us are in the restaurant industry. One of us is a doctor. The other one is in the airline industry and our other member is in the makeup industry so wow yeah. yeah just to have those people around you pretty valuable mix them up constancio because yes, they all yes. learn from each other yeah yes and i think that's the whole idea behind it like what rain had mentioned before we started the class i had him take a creativity quiz just to understand and see what their you know what their skills are and also what their backgrounds are and so i really made it a point that every team is diverse and they bring in different skills and they learn from each other right yeah, but they may not be alphabetically diverse <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay yeah. we try we try the best we can 
Okay, yeah. so what is what is your uh, what is your uh, team doing? What is your um, you know your um, um, your you know your I guess your your project and um, and did the team select the project? Did Professor Constanzio select the project? Uh, how did you focus on this project? And how does that uh, comport with your hmm, direction in life? Um, so our project is called the Laulimo Society Cookbook. When we were discussing a project name, one of my teammates, Mariah, she came up with the name because Laulimo means many hands or cooperation. And the society part comes from our aim at bringing the community together to help each other reduce um, their daily carbon footprint. So we originally wanted to do a social media page in which we'd bring awareness about climate change and the things we could do in our daily lives. However, um, after some talk, the idea was pivoted to become a cookbook concept. Um, this being that a cookbook is essentially a guide with like numerous recipes on making a variety of dishes. With the La Lemo Society, it would be similar in nature, but rather than provide providing food recipes, we would provide recipes and guides for reducing carbon footprint in our everyday lives. We is a very important term, um, you know, in this modular class. Um, so my question is, uh, how does your how does your team function? Uh, a, uh, is everybody on the same page? Are you pulling in different directions? Is there a leader or a leadership group that takes you down the road on this? How do you make decisions? How, how universal and unanimous are those decisions? Um, for our group, we had a group chat. Um, we would often talk after class as well. Um, if someone had an idea that we all agreed upon, um, everyone would just add their own ideas and pivot to um, make it ourselves, like incorporate each other's interests into our book. So when we were um, designing our overall book, everyone took a specific section that they were most interested in. And then we did our own parts, but then came back together to put the book together. Now, so um, does um, Professor Farnell uh, stand by and alert on you? Does he come around and, and look yes. over your shoulder and give you and kibitz with you? How does how do you interact with him? Um, do you need do you need him? For this project, oh, we sorry, had Constanzio, I, <laughs> I just needed to ask that question. <laughs> Um, for this project, or like every project for Professor Parnell, we do it in phases. So each phase would be a different progress. And then we would check with him after each phase and get feedback, which we could incorporate into our projects. Okay. And how, how are you going to be graded? Is it on the basis of your participation in the group? Is it on the basis of a presentation or a test? Or do you not yet know? Um, I think it was graded mainly on creativity at like our efforts into the project. I'm not too sure though. I don't really remember how it was. Why do going. I feel you're going to find out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the class already finished, so I got a good date. <laughs> okay. So all of that considered, you know, entrepreneurship and the bottom line and the Shidler College of Business and uh, making the world, making Hawaii more you know, profitable. Um, how does that comport with climate change? In other words, if if, if you took the best lessons that you learned with the team and you projected them into the Hawaii State Legislature and those guys listened to every word you said, okay, how would our state change and how would our world change? What, you know, what, what do those lessons mean to the world? Um, so like with this project, like it increased me and my group's knowledge of both like environmental sustainability and climate issues tremendously. When we were doing research about the issue, as well as finding like different recipes and activities that we would incorporate into the book, we learned a lot of new things, like such as how much carbon emissions, different um, items that we use in our daily life emit, such as like, I believe a single plastic bag emits about 1.58 kilograms of carbon emissions during its productions. Um, we also learned about various local businesses that have business models that advocate for so sustainability and climate change. Just to name a few, there are Melly Wraps, which promotes a plastic wrap alternative, Sunday's Bikinis that reuses plastic and repurposes it into bikinis. And there are much more businesses that are like shifting their business models to promote um, sustainability and climate change, which I think is very significant and amazing in our generations, being that like people from my generation, we're always about promoting climate change and finding brands that um, fit the values that we have. 
You think you'll be able to speak truth to power when you get out there in the business community and say to the boss, hey, you're wrong. I learned a few things with uh, Professor Parnell, and uh, I want to just repeat them to you now because I expect that our company will follow these, you know, these lessons. Are you going to be able to do that? That's um, a hard. It's a hard question, Constanze. <laughs> <laughs> I almost want to answer it for her. <laughs> um, personally, I think yes. For me, I work in a small organization, and my boss really amplifies like speaking out what we believe in and um, putting our actions into words or like putting our words into actions. So when we give him an opinion or like something that we think would be a good idea, he puts it into action and he helps us bring our idea into um, the business model. But for other organizations, I'm not too sure being that like, of course there's different hierarchies in the organizations and to get to the top, it would take a lot of, um, words and messages to get our my message all the way to the top. Would you quit? Um, it depends. Like if the my values for the company doesn't um, match, then yes. But if I feel like in the future I could make a change, then I would wait. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, Marissa. Let's go to you now. How much of what Raina said? Do you agree with on a percentage basis? <laughs> um, probably all of it. Raina is very smart, and um, I work with her in classes too. And she always has um, very good ideas. And so, you know, I also believe, like in companies, I believe in unity, and I believe in uh, values. And me personally, if I had to work in a place that I it didn't really match my values, I would want to speak up. Um, like Raina say, hierarchy is, you know, still kind of runs big businesses. So that can be an issue too. You know, sometimes you just have to wait for your moment. Yeah. Sometimes you have to wait to get into a position where you can speak truth to power. And yeah. uh, you can tell them to get off the train. You're in charge because we want mm -hmm. you to be in charge. On the other hand, you know, you can always, you know, quote our discussion here on Think Tech Hawaii and your discussions with Professor Parnell in class, where you assured us that you would speak truth to power. And you know, you say to your boss, I'm sorry, sir, but I promised to speak truth to power. So get off the train. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it takes a lot of uh, guts to be able to, you know, speak to your boss about something you um, really believe though. And I think it does make it worth in the end to, to speak your mind. Well, you know, we only, you know, live on the planet for so long and be able to turn around and say, I did good. I did good. So um, what, what, what have you learned in this class so far? What are the profound lessons that you've picked up? And, and here's a question I did not ask Raina. The question is, how has the class changed you? This class really emphasized on creativity and you would think creativity is only in like innovation in new technologies, new art forms and things like that. But it uh, really showed me that creativity can come in so many different ways. It can come if you're like an HR and ways you manage people, it can come in product development, things like that. And I think just being open to seeing what's around you and really, um, taking that in and then developing something that people need that that might not be there it might be something little and things like that and kind of transforming I think is my my takeaway in that class and what Professor Paranel taught me and it really changed how I view certain aspects and how I can incorporate my own creativity like trying something new can be a new creative outlet or trying to cook something off of Raina's recipe book it would be a new creative outlet for me. So that's something that I uh, really appreciated taking away from the class. So how are they doing so far, Constancio, uh, here in the program? Are you impressed? Are you impressed with, with these students in class? Are you impressed today? Oh, yes. Yeah, no, definitely. I think uh, I, I'm really impressed with, with both Raina and Marissa and how they, they handled um, 
being in their groups and, and the outcome of the projects. I think uh, I've had them in other classes as well. And so I know their capabilities and I've seen them grow and I, I know their, you know, their potential and I look forward to what they're going to be doing in the future. Um, and and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, the class really inspired them to speak to their truth and also know themselves in ways that they have never really known themselves before. So, so, so let's say it's uh, 2025 or six or seven, and one day, hmm, Raina or Marissa come to see you at the Scheidler College of Business. They mm -hmm. say, you know, I've got this issue in my company. You know, I thought it was a good job, but I don't think they properly respect the environment and all the lessons I learned, you know, I'm trying to make that come true. And I need some advice from you, Professor, because mm -hmm. I will always come and ask you advice. You touched me when I took that class, and I want to know what you think about this. You see that happening? Well, I think for any professor, I think that's always like, a, you know, part of, let's say, uh, what, you, what you anticipate or maybe not anticipate, but that's what you want to happen. And so if if they come back to visit me and to to share with me their stories and what they're doing, I would be so thrilled and excited because I've always wanted to see where they are. And, and I think, you know, maintaining that connection is very important and that relationship is very important. So, you know, yeah, I, I hope that day happens and, and that we continue to to remain in contact and and yeah, I'm really looking forward to what they're going to be doing in the future. Yeah, as and when that happens, you should bring them back on on the show here. And we can <laughs> yeah. explore exactly what, what's going on. But, but I think just like any other professor, I think for me personally, my commitment to, to my student does not end when the course ends. And I, I tell them that all the time. I think my commitment to them is, you know, for a lifetime, you know, until you know, whenever they need me, they have my cell phone number, they have a way to contact me, because I think that's what's important, you know, being in the classroom is not just about, you know, me instructing them and lecturing, it's really about creating that, that relationship and building that relationship. Uh, Hawaii is such a small community, right, and that's what I always tell them, is like, it, it's such a small community, and I think, you know, building that relationship will take us, take us far in life, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, um, Marissa, you know, you, what, what, to, by the way, what is your project and um, what is your class if it's different from Raina's class? Is it a better no. class? Is your, no. are, you team mem <laughs> are your team members better? <laughs> no, we are Just thought I'd ask, in the you know. same class. No. <laughs> no, my, I definitely love my group and, you know, Raina loves her group, but, um, my project, my group project was uh, called Repurposing with a Purpose. And our emphasis was on upcycling and um, creating or giving new life to something that might be at the end of their life cycle. So what we did was we uh, created a blanket out of our old t-shirts. So there was five of us in the group. Um, we all contributed five shirts and a needle and um, the string so that we can all sew together. And so we all um, came together one class and after class and we just sewed up the blanket and we really wanted to um, uh, emphasize the effects of like a linear life cycle of a product and then creating it into a circular life cycle of a product so that it um, a lot of times clothes and microplastics go into the trash, they go into the oceans, they get burnt. And um, we wanted to find a way to reduce that and give new life. So we created, we stitched up a blanket and it was all of our first time sewing. So it wasn't, you know, like grandma's blanket, super nice and cozy. It was, it was um, amateur, but still usable and very, um, it was more heartfelt because we all came together to make this project and then we donated it for someone in need so they could use it maybe if they're homeless or if they just need an extra blanket um, and just give the clothes that we had that we would probably just throw away into something that someone else can find useful. Mm, yeah, there's many lessons in that. Um, so, you know, uh, just as I asked Constanzio if he would hang around for you years later and be available to you. Uh, what about what about the team members? Um, do you, 
you know, are you going to stay in Hawaii? Do you think you're going to stay in touch with them? You think you might. Are you ready for this one? Okay. Are you sitting down? You think you might go into business with them? Uh, me personally, they I really love them. They were super cool. Um, I'm sure they would we would be acquainted later in the future. I would I would do business with them because I know how they work, and that really helps um, to you know having some background to know how to move forward. But um, intentionally I, I i'm not too sure but the relationships i made with them are very grateful you want to stay in, are you going to stay in hawaii and do business in hawaii uh i'm i'm probably yes my family's based out of here so i would love to stay yeah well the whole the rest of the world is falling apart so hawaii looks better every day as a matter of fact yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, um so rain i want to ask you i mean do these teams talk to each other um, in other words, have, have you spent any time with Marissa's team ever get together? Do you know about her project? Does she know about yours? Um, is there a time during, you know, the, um, the cycle of this course, if you will, where the teams all get, get together in a room and compare notes? Um, this project was pretty, or our classic essentially was really different. Um, through our like activities, we mainly worked in, um, in our own groups, but Occasionally during class, like when our discussions, we would all come together to talk. Um, we also like would talk after class too to gain those relationships. But when when it comes to working with our projects, we kind of just stayed with our own projects. But we didn't know about what others were doing and how their progress was going. You think you might do business with the members of your team? Um, yes. Um, however, we do have different passions. All um. One of us is a doctor and she's doing so well with her research. Um, another one is he's working with his company and he loves it there. So it would be hard to find like a passion for all of us because we are so different. But if there ever comes a time, I think that working with them would be fun. You know, Constancio, I want to tell you a story. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a, a place called the New Fitzsimmons. It's, um, it's formerly it was a military hospital, just like Tripler even mm -hmm. painted in the same color and it's, <laughs> it's near Denver. Okay. And mm -hmm. the federal government decided they wanted to have a, a big pharma a research, uh, you know, facility in this old hospital. And so they appointed a guy named Robert Olson um, to bring big pharma together. And his problem was that the researchers who were coming, you know, with their various companies and doing research in the various laboratories, um, needed to talk to each other. Um, and, and, the, and the problem in that regard was everybody was afraid of, of giving up intellectual property um, mm. by, by talking to each other about. So what he did is food. He did food. Um, he had, <laughs> you're laughing. I know. Yeah. <laughs> he did food. And, and every day or two, he would have this great big breakfast and he would organize, the, you know, all these people, like all these researchers to come and share breakfast and eat mm -hmm. and speak to each other. And mm -hmm. they shared their secrets on a, you know, a trust basis. And they didn't violate, uh, you know, uh, any intellectual property rights and so forth. But mm -hmm. it was the magic uh, recipe yeah. to bring all these companies together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just wonder if, um, if I can send some sandwiches over uh, to the Charlotte College of Business and, and help do what Robert Olson did. What do you think? Well, I think that's definitely one of the things that uh, we stress in the class is that, you know, one of the things that I mentioned to, to the entire class when I created that spreadsheet in the beginning is that this is not just an ordinary class. This is our support system. This is our network, right? And I want them to feel that when we get out of this class that we will continue to remain in touch and we can count on each other because this class is going to create and solidify those relationships that we're going to form in six weeks, right? And, and part of what we did, like what you had mentioned, it's, it's building that trust that would formulate that relationship. One of the things that we did is, you know, sharing our stories. And I think there is power in our stories that allow us to connect with one another, that allow us to identify with others and relate with others. Our stories resonate with each other in, in a way that we finally understand that there, we have more similarities and more things in common that 
what differentiates ours. And, and so I, I definitely agree. I think, you know, what, what you had mentioned, I think sometimes there is fear in terms of, um, you know, working together because whether you're protecting your own department, protecting your own ideas, and you don't want others to, uh, to gain hold of, of what you have uh, because we're operating in a very competitive environment. But I think what we're stressing is that in, in competition, there is always cooperation, right? Where we can all win together and be successful together. Okay, we're almost out of time. So I, I would like to ask for a closing argument here. Doesn't have to be an <laughs> argument. <laughs> uh, let, me go to, let me go to you, Reda. Same question. Um, can you give us your advice, give the, you know, the, the people of Hawaii your advice, the people who care about these issues, about environment and education, and, um, you know, blending it with entrepreneurship and design and uh, careful development? What's your advice? Um, so on behalf of my team, we just want to, like, emphasize that there are so many things that people can do in our daily lives that can help with, like, climate change. Though these effects may seem minimal now, in the end, if we come together as a community and we put our words into actions, um, we can make a difference. It can be as simple as cutting electronic usage to supporting sustainable brands. Whatever um, a person may decide to do may be beneficial in the long run. Okay, well, it's, uh, it's, this is important in the sense of the future of our state and more. Um, Marissa, you, you didn't answer my question yet, so I'm going to give you the chance to do that now. What's, what is your closing comment, everybody? Uh, enhance their awareness. Uh, help, help them understand what they can do for the planet. I know, my, my internet just got super nervous for me, but, um, you know, there, even if you have like a small idea to change something, um, it can be, it can grow into something big. So, like uh, it's good to foster your thoughts. It's good to foster ideas into something that could be useful in the future for your kids for generations. It doesn't matter if it does. It might not apply now, but uh, put it into works and it it would uh, pay off in the long run. That's that's what I believe. Okay, you know, just like uh, Professor Paranel said, you know, it's a family. You guys are in a family, but you're in the think tech family too. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's forever. That's the way it is. Okay. You will always yeah. be with us and we will always think of you. Um, Constancio, you know, you're the guy who set this up. You figured it out. Mm -hmm. uh, you put, you know, these elements together mm -hmm. um, with a with a very uh, elemosinary and, um, you know, public-minded approach on things. I'm not sure mm -hmm. that anybody else that I know at, at the university is doing exactly this because mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're situated in a great place. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Shiloh College of Business to do this. So I wonder if you could explain from your point of view, why it's important that we have this kind of program, not only with Shiloh, but elsewhere. Why is it important that we teach, um, you know, uh, potential entrepreneurs about these things? And mm -hmm. why is it important that we take every opportunity to raise awareness? Yeah, well, like I had mentioned a while ago, I think, um, the problems that we're experiencing now, it is really because of the actions that we've, we've taken, right? And uh, whether it's the pandemic, um, you know, when we think about it, it really is driven by human actions. And so I feel that as, a, you know, a professor of faculty at the Shiloh College of Business, I have the opportunity to influence and to inspire uh, students. And I take that responsibility to heart. Um, and, and so I use my platform to, you know, to provide not just some level of education, but to allow my students to also find their voice and to promote whatever advocacies and causes they support. I think climate change is very dear to, to all of us. Um, uh, especially here in Hawaii, we have a very unique place. We have a very unique environment a very diverse ecosystem. And I think we want our children and our children's children to experience what we've experienced. Uh, like what Marissa had mentioned and Reina also echoed, you know, it may not, we may not think about, you know, what 
this would mean to the future generations, but I think those future generations do not have a voice at this current time. And we are their voice. And, and so we need to use the power that we have, you know, the knowledge that we have and the experience that we have to be able to provide for those future generations because they too have a right to experience what we've experienced to, to this, this place and to this planet. And I think it's really up to us to provide them that right and to provide them that future that they deserve. Rain and Marissa, I hope you were either memorizing that or writing it down. Uh, <laughs> that's really the, the core point. And the core word that I would leave with you in my comment about all this is advocacy. Mm -hmm. We need all the advocates we can find. We need to raise awareness and activate people and keep them focused on this. And you guys are in a great spot. Furthermore, you know, students, doesn't happen all the time, but students graduate and they don't know how to speak to the public. And you guys obviously do know how to speak to the public. So please carry on forever. Thank you very much. And thank you, Constanzio. I, I want to do this again with you, okay? You know thank that. Thank you so much. I'm yes. looking forward. Yes. Thank Aloha, you so everyone. Much. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.